So, uh, welcome to our advanced algorithms. Um, today we are just going to discuss um, what we are going to do in this class and just give you kind of uh, a motivation why this is, uh, why the material is interesting and useful. Okay? Um, uh, as for the material to be covered, uh, um, you will have quite extensive lecture notes uh, and also most of the topics will be covered in the textbook. Uh, and uh, it should be available in the bookstore and it's an extraordinarily nice book. Uh, I found it hard to believe that it was written by a computer scientist uh, because uh, um, it actually read really uh, really well. Um, so the course will be similar to uh, algorithms 3121, except that this time uh, we will put more focus on the algorithms themselves rather than just techniques for designing algorithms. So in 3121, we did uh, greedy, we did uh, dynamic programming, we did max flow. Uh, but most of the examples were chosen because they are the most suitable to explain the techniques, right? And they were not necessarily uh, terribly important on their own right, like, uh, you know, we were doing uh, turtle towers, right? Which is arguably not very useful um, algorithm, uh, but it illustrated very well uh, the subtleties of uh, dynamic programming. But uh, uh, here, in this class, <coughs> we have to get serious about particular algorithms, and no algorithm will be chosen because it's a good illustration for a technique. We will still pay attention uh, to the techniques used in designing these algorithms. And as you will see, algorithms from very different fields uh, can be solved with somewhat similar uh, techniques, right? But the algorithms themselves will be crucially important in industry at this very moment, right? So, what we are going to cover is really what is uh, under the hood at, uh, so to speak, industrial strand algorithms. So, um, what are examples of such algorithms? Well, we will start with the page rank, uh, how Google ranks the web pages, which is, of course, an extremely important algorithm uh, nowadays, and a nice example of a design technique as well. Uh, then we will cover things uh, such as um, aggregation of inconsistent information. So, for example, uh, if you have a website in which uh, customers can rank products, uh, can evaluate products, uh, you want to uh, aggregate these scores uh, but in a way that it is maximally robust for malicious behavior, right? Because maybe you want to organize a few of your buddies uh, to go to the website and give bad marks to your competitors, right? So we will be exploring if there is a way uh, to um, make such essentially vote, voting kind of uh, uh, algorithms, namely algorithms for aggregating votes uh, in an uh, optimal way. Yeah? Another example of the same type of algorithm would be, for example, um, recommendations from, uh, from market analysts, uh, what stocks you should buy, what stocks you should sell. And in this case, what we want to achieve is uh, we want to find a kind of most reliable estimate of what a community sentiment is, right? It would be hard to expect that we can actually achieve aggregations in the sense uh, 
that uh, it's more accurate <coughs> in some absolute sense, uh, but uh, instead uh, we want to see what the majority of the analysts uh, think and uh, we can take into account, uh, for example, past performance of market analysts uh, and uh, give higher weight to those uh, who were successful in predicting the market, right? Um, and interestingly enough, this problem can be tackled by uh, similar methods uh, as the page rank. Um, so another important kind of uh, uh, algorithms are the recommender systems, right? If, uh, if you go to um, Amazon website, or at least uh, when I go to buy a particular book at Amazon, somehow the system really uh, suggests books that I might be really interested in. Uh, it makes extremely good recommendations. Uh, and you can see why such algorithms can be fundamentally important for uh, industry, because if you make good recommendations, you increase the likelihood that uh, uh, someone who came to buy a particular book uh, uh, will be likely to end up buying several books. Uh, now, uh, what is interesting about uh, uh, this algorithm, of, of this problem, is that, uh, and in fact, a unifying thread for all of uh, uh, the algorithms that we are going to consider will be that they are actually sophisticated and they use a little bit of mathematics. So uh, you, it's easy to believe that the Amazon uh, recommender system, people who design it cannot care less about mathematical beauty of the algorithm. They only care about its efficiency, right? How much it can increase Amazon's profit. Um, so if they use mathematical methods, so you can believe me that that's absolutely not the case because they want to appear fancy and sophisticated, but it's because these algorithms really work, right? And uh, you will see that a very large uh, number of uh, very down-to-earth, al I mean, algorithms to solve extremely down-to-earth uh, problems, such as recommender systems, such as voting, such as aggregation of inconsistent information, like analyst recommendation. Uh, the underlying thread in all of them is uh, application of uh, mathematical methods, and in particular, application of iterative methods, or methods that, specifically iterative methods that compute fixed point of a, uh, of a function, of a banking, right? Uh, so, and that's the reason uh, why uh, um, probably half of the algorithms that we are going to consider will have uh, uh, the same underlying idea of uh, um, iterative approach. Uh, to give you another example, uh, we will also do uh, the algorithm that your cell phone, uh, that your mobile phone uses to optimize uh, the throughput. Uh, so what is uh, the problem there? Well, um, users uh, that are connected with the same tower, right, the same base stations, base station can be at uh, 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 very different distances. Someone can be almost near to near the base station, and someone can be uh, away uh, close to the end of the range of this uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, base station. If they all uh, radiated the same power, the guy who is close to the base station would uh, produce so much noise for the guy that is far away that uh, uh, he would seriously impede the connection of the far away 
guys. So somehow the, uh, your mobile phone has to decide how much power it will output. Uh, otherwise, you see, um, uh, the, one would think, well, why is this a problem? If uh, the base station cannot hear me very well, I can just increase my power, right? Well, what happens uh, uh, with such <coughs> logic is this, assume that you are at a party, right? And people are talking to each other, so you talk to uh, someone, but uh, people uh, around you are also talking and they are making noise for you. So to make sure that your partner hears you, you start speaking a little bit louder. Well, when you start speaking a little bit louder, you produce more noise for other people. So then they start speaking a little bit louder to compensate for your increased noise. And in this way, they create more noise for you. So you start speaking even louder, right? And in the end, everyone is shouting. And obviously, uh, something like that cannot work. Uh, uh, we will see an extremely simple, fully distributed algorithm to solve this problem. Uh, but as simple as the algorithm itself is, uh, the reason why it works is actually highly non-trivial and also involves uh, um, iterative uh, solutions to a uh, fixed point uh, problem. And in order to achieve that, uh, it uses information from another algorithm that your uh, mobile phone uh, performs, namely the error correction code, uh, coding. So what is uh, the error correction? What, is the, what are the algorithms for error correction? So for example, the music uh, or that uh, you might be listening from a compact disc, even though nowadays everything is downloaded, I haven't seen compact discs for quite a while, people using them. Um, even if you keep it very clean, it's very likely that there will be specks of dust here and there on the disc. So when the laser beam comes over the speck of dust, dust Obviously, it will lose, uh, it will not be able to read uh, the piece of the track that is uh, underneath the dust particle. So, and obviously you cannot avoid that. Uh, it's impossible to clean your disk or to keep it so scratch free so that uh, there, are no, there is no loss of information. So in fact, to overcome this, uh, one might do something like that. Uh, every packet is recorded, say, uh, of information is recorded three times, uh, right? And the idea is, uh, uh, after you read the, all these packets, uh, since you have three copies of, this, of uh, the uh, chunk of information labeled by the same label, you can do a voting, you can take majority and take as a correct value uh, if two of the packets have the same uh, uh, data recorded. But the problem with this is obviously that this introduces huge redundancy because essentially then only one third of the capacity of, the, of your CD will be genuinely used uh, to record information. The uh, other two thirds are just to um, correct possible errors, right? So this obviously cannot work. And amazingly enough, one can design algorithms <coughs> that uh, introduce minor redundancy, say they increase the size uh, of the file by 10%, but can take quite a few errors, right? And still perfectly reconstruct the, this information. So that's an extremely uh, interesting uh, 
um, extremely interesting uh, algorithm and uh, it really kind of looks surprising that you can do such uh, error correction with uh, smaller redundancy. So in short, um, everything that we are going to do will be absolutely, and you can tell this from the titles in the book, uh, it will be uh, something that uh, definitely runs out there, right? Uh, but uh, its design involves uh, more sophisticated and uh, more mathematical methods, right? So now, each year I have very mixed group of students, right? Some of them are actually math majors. Some of them are electrical engineers, so some of them are computer scientists. And I have to make this course useful for everyone, uh, regardless of uh, how much uh, mathematical background they might have. Now, it's impossible to present these algorithms uh, in any useful way. I can tell you stories, but you won't be able to code such algorithms or to design new algorithms using similar ideas and unless I do show you some uh, amount of mathematics involved. But uh, I will keep this at a minimum uh, and I will use uh, just what is necessary in order to understand the algorithm. Uh, we will not do proofs, but the lecture notes and the, the book actually contain uh, derivations uh, uh, of all the mathematical uh, features, of all mathematical theorems that we are going to use in class. So there is no way out, totally out of mathematics, simply because that's just how things are, right? It's like if you were a physicist and wanted to do physics without using mathematics, every physicist will laugh, right? Unfortunately, it is becoming uh, like that in computer science. Uh, and as I say, these are all bread and butter algorithms uh, for, uh, that are used in industry, right? Uh, but they must involve some uh, mathematics. So I will make it self-contained, uh, uh, so we will essentially introduce everything we need. Uh, what I would like you to do is to read the, this, uh, on the website you will find a refresher about probability, right? Uh, and again, the refresher has a basic material and maybe not so basic material, uh, but uh, it's a good idea to just brush up about probabilities uh, uh, and basic statistics, right? That, uh, it's just uh, to remember what is the mean of random variable, what is the variance of random variable, and similar. <laughs> the other thing that we will use uh, is just the basic matrix algebra, basic linear algebra, right? So this should be also not a terrible problem, right? Um, I, if you are at all mathematically inclined, then I would uh, strongly recommend to, for you to read the part of the lecture notes that is kind of mathematically sophisticated and in all the lecture notes it's separated. So I called it extended material and it's often interspersed uh, within the regular material. So if you <coughs> see extended material and you are still math adverse, you might want to skip it. <coughs> but uh, to get a full picture, uh, reading everything uh, would be uh, really, really nice, right? Uh, but I will try, so <coughs> I will try to keep this uh, 
so that you can benefit from it regardless of what your focus is. So you can uh, do this course if you are more focused on implementations. Uh, you can do this course if you are a pure mathematician and you want to focus on the theorems. Uh, <coughs> so there will be a uh, good opportunity for everyone, but as I say, uh, as I said, um, it's impossible to do it without any mathematics and still have it useful, right? So that's the philosophy behind the, the course. Okay, so um, I will occasionally assign homeworks uh, that I would urge you to try to solve them, uh, but um, the, unfortunately, I don't have tutors uh, for this course, so I cannot mark, uh, uh, well, we will see. Uh, but uh, uh, there will be a few exercises always for you to kind of uh, test your understanding of the material. So the grade in this course it consists of 60% uh, of a major project and 40% of uh, your grade on the final one. So, what is the major project? <clears throat> you know, most of people who take this class are fourth year students uh, that will soon graduate, right? And I really hate uh, to ask people to do things that are just an academic exercise that you will never meet uh, later, right? And you just kind of do it uh, just to satisfy the requirement of the course. So I actually allow lots of kind of breath, lots of leeway uh, with respect to uh, topic choice uh, for your final uh, project and I urge you to pick something that you are uh, really personally interested in. Right, so I had students who were really into uh, finance and uh, investment and they, uh, you know, would do project on uh, aggregation of uh, stock recommendations. Um, and the, but the scope really ranges. I also had a student who uh, ported uh, uh, some old-fashioned, uh, 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 how do you call it, uh, arcade games to a modern uh, uh, computer. Um, some people uh, implemented uh, some web-related uh, uh, algorithm to aggregate uh, uh, votes in social media and so forth. So, so uh, uh, the only requirement, of course, is that uh, the project has to have a reasonably reasonable portion of uh, kind of algorithmic content. But uh, what algorithms you choose and what you uh, do with the algorithm can be kind of can be made quite adaptive for your personal interests. Uh, so I had students. Uh, in fact, in this course, uh, uh, not last year. Last year, guys were a bit on the lazy side, but uh, a few years, uh, uh, two years back, and uh, several years back, I had. Uh, students who wrote uh, uh, the final project and then published the paper in uh, very reputable uh, venues like uh, IEEE transactions on parallel and distributed systems and uh, other journals. Uh, so <coughs> some of the papers were kind of novel algorithms uh, for uh, one of them was for data aggregation in wireless sensor networks. Um, one lady proved convergence of an algorithm who, uh, well, that was designed by another student the year before, 
and her final project uh, had uh, consisted of three pages, right? But it was uh, proof uh, that uh, no one else before uh, got. So it. So what I'm trying to say, uh, there is no prescribed land of what you have to do. It just has to be a good piece of work, and it can be a good piece of work uh, uh, from uh, different uh, uh, perspectives, right? It can be a sophisticated, efficient, someone did a, a kind of efficient implementation of the page rank algorithm applied to Wikipedia links uh, <coughs> to sort the, the, uh, the, the articles according to their importance. Um, so uh, some people, as I mentioned, design new algorithms. So there is really quite a lot of breadth of what you can do, but what I would really like to see is you doing something that because you are really interested in. Oh, uh, another interesting uh, uh, final project was a lady uh, wasn't quite sure what she wanted to do, but she already had uh, uh, lined up a job when she graduates uh, with, uh, uh, what was, uh, Atlassian, I think it's called, uh, a company. So I told her simply to go and see her future boss there and to ask him what kind of projects she will be involved and if he has a problem uh, that uh, he would like to, uh, her to give it a try whilst she was still studying. So, and she did an extremely good job uh, and of course it was extremely useful to her once she uh, started working uh, there. Yeah, I had also students who now work for Google and so forth. So uh, I just don't want you to do something because you have to do it for this course. Uh, because trust me, life is too short to waste time like that. Uh, so how do you choose uh, your topic? Well, uh, there are two ways. Uh, some of you might already know what uh, interests you and all you have to do is discuss with me whether the topic is uh, appropriate. Uh, otherwise, if you don't have any particular ideas, you can kind of uh, wait uh, uh, for the maybe first uh, third or half of the course and maybe and you can look through the book. Okay, another uh, possible project is uh, uh, you can choose a topic from the book that we will not cover and then write an essay about this topic but extending the, what's in the uh, book by uh, looking at the um, articles either referenced in the book or you can Google and search for the topic and you can expand the chapter from the book and give a scholarly article about a particular uh, important uh, problem, right? So if you don't have a, at the moment anything in your mind uh, what you would uh, like to do, there is no reason to panic. Uh, we always find good topics uh, for everyone. And as I mentioned so far, I don't remember, but at least three or four, maybe even more, you no, know, must be at least four or five papers uh, were published in serious, uh, uh, highly reputable venues that were. Um, in fact, uh, uh, projects uh, of, uh, of my students. Uh, and for one of them, uh, uh, a guy came up with a colossal idea how to improve a uh, recommender system. And I begged him to finish it off and uh, to publish it, but he just wouldn't be bothered to my, to my, for, to my sorrow. Uh, but uh, such is life. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, so this is to give you an idea. So don't be intimidated by 
the mathematical content because what everyone has to understand will be rather elementary and I don't expect you or expect all of you to um, go through the proofs uh, uh, because some of this theory as you will see for the page rank it's actually remarkably uh, sophisticated uh, the intuition behind the page rank is rather simple uh, but uh, in mathematical machinery that uh, guarantees that page rank will do what it claims it will be doing is actually quite deep and it, vol it, it involves uh, things uh, uh, called Markov chains that we will define and explain uh, but uh, uh, you don't have to look at the proofs of the existence of something called stationary distribution for Markov chain uh, which is what page rank is in effect uh, and uh, if you go even deeper uh, there is something called uh, Perron Frobenius theory for positive uh, matrices so um, uh, this is really if you want to see every detail that uh, uh, makes page rank function uh, as it has so the high level can be done with uh, reasonably with kind of uh, modest amount of uh, uh, mathematics and uh, uh, I had students who actually designed algorithms using these ideas uh, who barely had any mathematics training uh, before so uh, don't get intimidated by uh, mathematics so that's about it what uh, um, what uh, the course is about. Any questions uh, so far? No questions? Good, okay, so um, I think we are um, in agreement there. Okay, so let me just give you a taste of uh, what is to come and we will use the same strategy as in 3121 uh, we will start with naive ways uh, naive attempts to solve a problem and find out why these attempts do not work uh, because in this way we want to see what kind of particular difficult point uh, the algorithm has to address the design of the algorithm if I just tell you the algorithm it's of no use right you have to kind of see uh, what motivated uh, the algorithm so I'll give you today a few examples uh, but then uh, starting from next class I guess on Thursday right we will dive uh, uh, more deep into uh, first our topic which is the page rank right so what is the problem that the page rank uh, so, uh, solves right if when you search the web uh, you type in some keywords uh, and of course um, for essentially any keywords or short sentences uh, there will be gazillions of web pages uh, that uh, contain uh, your keywords uh, so it would be totally useless if uh, the search engine would simply produce a gigantic list uh, of all the web pages that uh, uh, that contains such a keyword um, so even when what Google does if you look at the result of the search it's, uh, it still produces a huge list of uh, of, um, of hits uh, but and this is how the Google made money 
the most interesting and the most informative and the most important uh, web pages containing your keywords should appear near the top of that list. Right? So obviously the criteria should be not just whether or how many times a particular keyword appears uh, on the uh, on the web page, uh, but how important the web page is. Uh, how would you measure importance of the web page of a web page? Uh, well, the importance of the web page should be reflected in the structure of hyperlink structure of the internet. Uh, right? For example, if a web page uh, uh, is pointed at uh, by very large number of other web pages. Uh, this would kind of indicate uh, that this web page is more important than a web page that is pointed at by just a few other web pages. Uh, right? So one might say, okay, let us sort the list of hits according to how many web pages point to a particular web page. So if uh, among all the hits on top, I'll put web pages that are pointed at with the largest number, by largest number of other web pages. So, so what do you think? What's the problem with this naive page rank algorithm? I mean, you can just make your own pages. That you exactly. Do. So you can simply create bogus web pages that the only thing that they have, of course, they can have some random material to cover up the tracks, but uh, that points to your particular web page of choice, right? So obviously, this the criterion just by counting the number of uh, uh, incoming links for a web page will not work. How would you then solve the problem? How would you avoid uh, this uh, rigging of page rank uh, by, how would you make it robust with respect of this strategy of just creating random web pages and pointing to your web page? Uh, yes? Uh, could you add like a second layer of inversion? So uh, how many pages point to that very good. Page, which to exactly. 